He was captain of the Detroit Lions for nine consecutive years, the NFL All-Pro team eight times, and he was the Lions' most valuable player four times. It's indeed an honor for me to present a great player, a great person, and a great friend, Joe Schmidt. Thank you. Every box you want to check as a football player, Joe checked it. When Joe Schmidt was drafted here, you would think that a guy who accomplished all he accomplished here in Detroit, you'd think he'd have been treated uh, as, as royalty coming here in 1953, regardless of what round he was drafted on. Not so. I didn't think I had a chance to, to make the team. They were champions. Uh, you read about Bobby Lane and Doak Walker and Leon Hart. And we played a preseason game against the Pittsburgh Steelers, okay? Buster Ramsey came to me, he says, okay, he says, uh, you're gonna play. Uh, he says, you're gonna sink or swim. And he says, you look good today. He says, you might have a chance to make the team. All my life I played middle linebacker, so they put me at middle linebacker that day. So I had an outstanding day, see? So I finally made the team, which was, uh, I was very excited about it, naturally. And from there, it was uh, a wonderful experience. Look, he was a seventh round draft pick, but for a modest beginning, almost an afterthought player and, and, and at that time, Joe Schmidt became what, what Joe Schmidt was, which, like I said, one of the icons in any sport in the history of Detroit. Joe Schmidt was the prototype middle linebacker. Uh, as far as I know, he was the first. Joe just immediately was a cog on the teams that won championships in the 1950s. Well, I think they became great with him more than adding him. But when you have a middle linebacker, especially in those days, it was a different game. The Detroit Lions saw the value of having a stud in the middle of your defense who could run, cover, tackle, you know, make plays all over the field. And, and from then on, he was the middle linebacker. Quarterback on O'Glan, fakes the pass. He's right, hit, and fumbled. The point cluster Begaman dies for the ball on Clinton's 12-yard line, and the Lions get the first break in the game. I think this is just my own standard. I have what I call every era players. Joe was an every era player, and you can look at the statistics too. I mean, 10 Pro Bowls, eight straight times all pro in a 12 game season in 1955. He recovered eight fumbles, eight. I mean, guys don't get that in a career now. Physically, the mental part of the game, everything. He had it all, he had everything. He was big enough, he was strong enough, he was fast enough, he was smart enough. But Joe, he was not just a great player, but he was a great leader too. People, people looked to him. He talked it, he walked it, he played it, he really did. Good afternoon, football fans. The Browns and the Lions battle it out for the world supremacy of professional football. I thought playing at Briggs Stadium, that was great. It felt like you could reach out and touch the spectators, you know, it was so, so close. A crowd of over 55,000 here at Briggs Stadium, Detroit. The sun is shining. It's a good day for football. Lou Carpenter tries to turn the right flank. The Lions all-pro linebacker Joe Schmidt lays Lou Lowe for a three-yard loss. The running backs are wide apart as O'Connell fades the pass. He looks once, he throws, it is intercepted. Joe Schmidt gets an assist from Yale Levy on this play, and the ball goes over to the line. It's a fake. Rudd is running with the ball, he throws the pass, and it's going to be for touchdown. My favorite memory about Joe Schmidt is after the Lions beat the Browns, the fans poured on the field. They got Schmidt, and they lifted him up and bounced him around. I, I was trying to get a, get the ball from the official, okay, and um, I turned around and this big horde of people just, you know, picked me up. George Puskis in the Free Press wrote a beautiful article about it. He wrote, Joe Schmidt was bobbing like a cork in the ocean. That's how I remember Joe Schmidt just bouncing. You know, I was never a champion in, in anything until I got here to Detroit, and uh, it's a feeling that uh, you never forget. 
I have a picture of the 1957 championship down, downstairs, and I sit there some days and just stare at that picture. We had a great football team. You know, Larry's a Hall of Famer, Jack Christie's a Hall of Famer, Doak Walker and uh, Bobby is a Hall of Famer. And it was good guys and everybody worked together and I sit and think about those games and think about the guys I played with and uh, to be with great football players, a, a great time. Well, the Detroit Lions were fairly successful after the 57 season, and Joe was done as a player in 1965, and I don't know if they really had him as a future head coach in mind, but they asked him to stay another year as, a, as an assistant coach, and he did. Harry Gilmer gets fired after the 66 season, and there's, as I recall, a fairly lengthy negotiation, and he finally said okay, and he became the head coach, and it took a while, but he turned that team around, he really did. I agreed to it, and uh, I got some excellent coaches and Chuck Knox and Jim David. They, you know, were experienced and they knew everything about football and so forth. So we developed, you know, pretty good football team there for a while. 1970, the Detroit Lions are now in a renaissance. Joe Schmidt showed the skill and patience producing a winner for the Motor City. In the, the 70 season, the Lions, Detroit Lions were 10 and 4. And really, there are a lot of people who thought they were the best team in football. And they won their last five games. Five games, and they beat five straight playoff teams. If you go back and just look at the stats and look at those last five games, they were the best team for those five games. And when do you want to be good? You want to be good when you're going into the playoffs. There's head coach Joe Schmidt in the middle. Now this is the team that is all together, as they like to put it. They were still a playoff contender the next year in 71, and then kind of a little more of a decline in 72. And after that, Joe got out of coaching. This is just my own opinion, and I'll hold to it. I think Barry Sanders was the greatest player in franchise history. But I think Joe is the greatest Lion, because he also added coaching to it. If you could name one, toughest person to tackle. Nobody. <laughs> I had no ambition to be a coach. I liked to have been an owner. <laughs> Joe Schmidt, when you met him and spent some time with him, he was uh, everything that you thought he would be and more. And just the way he carried himself, just the, the way he talked to people, smart. Everything he did was just a, a cut above everybody else. To express myself today uh, is difficult. I thought about this for quite some time. So I'd like to thank the Detroit Lions. I've been Detroit for 20 years, and they've all been enjoyable. Well, it's, uh, <laughs> I had an opportunity to play football and uh, come here to Detroit to be on a championship team. People have been awful good to me in this town, and uh, everything in my life that uh, I have, I have to say that because I was a Lion, I, I have it. I wish I'd covered him more. I really do as a player. Talk about a guy who uh, invented, helped invent a position in pro football. He also left behind, you know, a legacy here in the city of Detroit. He did it on the field, he did it as a coach, he did it in the community, and he'll be remembered forever because of it. I've traveled 20 years of pro football to many cities, and I'm very honored and humbled today to take my place in the Hall of Fame. Thank you very much.